Major support for Do the Math has been provided by Chevron, the Kern County Superintendent of Schools, Edison International, Valley Strong Credit Union, California Resources Corporation, Bakersfield West Rotary Stroop Family Foundation, Panama Buena Vista Union School District, Bakersfield City School District, Kern High School District, and AC Electric Company, with additional production assistance provided by these supporters of education in Kern County and throughout the state of California. Well, good afternoon and welcome to Do The Math. I'm Michael. And I'm Scott. And in studio with us, we have Sun. And Sun, if somebody wanted to get a hold of us, what would they need to do? For math homework help, call in Bakersfield, 636-4357, toll free 1-866-636-6284, email dothemath at kern.org, or online at dothemathonline.net, and on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and YouTube. All right, nicely done. Now, son, let everybody know where you go to school and what grade you're in. Um, I go to school at Warren Junior High and I'm in seventh grade. So your first year in junior high school, and have you even set foot on that campus yet? Uh, yeah, just to pick up stuff though. <laughs> <laughs> just to pick up stuff, right? So it's not quite what you thought it was gonna be so far. Yeah. But we all know it could be a little better. Everybody's kind of gotten used to the virtual learning thing. What has been the best thing so far about seventh grade? Uh, being able to chat with people during meetings. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that way, because in class, you can't really do that all the time, right? Because yeah. you're in there, you know, teachers like, hey, you know, stop with the side conversations. But <laughs> yeah. in, virtually, you guys can get on your chat on the side and kind of do that while you're doing other work. Yeah, well, unless good. the teacher turns off chat. <laughs> oh, do they do that often? Yeah. Oh, well, see, junior high, because maybe you guys do it a little too often, mm -hmm. maybe, right? Yeah. Well, you know, at least you're honest. You're like, oh, yeah, we get to chat during class and stuff <laughs> like that. All right. So how is math class going right now? Pretty good. What are you guys working on? Uh, we're, we're working on angles, like angle relationships. Okay. Well, we're going to do a little bit of that later on, all right? Okay. Uh, and we also have a very special guest coming in from the Bakersfield Museum of Art. You're going to do an activity with him later on. Okay. But before we get to any of that, let's first take a look at today's Math in the News. All right. Now, son, before we started the program, we were talking a little bit, and you were talking about how since you're at home all the time, you have more things to do. Yeah. So what kinds of things do you now have to do since you're home more? I have to put away the dishes, I have to sweep, I have to mop, and I occasionally do some, some chores in the kitchen, like okay. cutting vegetables, stuff like that. Okay. So you're just helping around the house. Yeah. Right? You're home all day. Let's go. <laughs> Get busy, right? Yeah. So it's not a bad thing, but it's yeah. just different yeah. when you're home every day, all day. Uh, you're not quite old enough yet, but do you ever go with your parents grocery shopping? Uh, yeah. Sometimes. Do you often take a look at the prices or you're just like, eh, whatever we need, we'll toss in there? And... Actually, I don't, I'm not allowed to do that. I just pick out what my mom says to me. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Now, do you have, uh, so here's another thing. Do you know what unit price is? Yeah, it's like the price of an item, like a single item. Right, for one thing. Yeah. Right. So you might go, oh, well, we need seven of these, but here's what the price is for one if you only need one or something like that. Right? Yeah. So today's Math in the News has to deal with my grocery receipt, actually just part of it we'll take a look at. So we can see that I've got a couple of things uh, kind of underlined and circled. I've got red onions, jumbo yellow onions, underneath that garlic, bell peppers, red bell peppers, and organic leeks. Now, son, there are three things circled there. Red onions, yellow onions, and organic leeks. Which one would you like to discuss first? <laughs> uh, we will go with leeks because 
buy those or eat those. You don't buy those or eat those? Have you ever had one? No. Well, it's kind of in the same family. I mean, all of those things are kind of related. They're all good for you and they taste good too. <laughs> anyway, so here we go. Let's take a look at the leeks. All right. So we can see that I bought 0.88 pounds of leeks and it's $1.99 a pound. So just estimating, is the cost going to be more or less than $1.99? It's going to be more than $1.99. Right. Okay. Why do you think it's going to be, so you think it's going to cause, for what I bought, I bought 0.88 pounds yeah. of leeks and the leeks cost $1.99 for a pound. So is it going to cost more than $1.99 or less than $1.99? Oh, it would be cost less. Why would it cost less? Now, are you asking me or are you telling me? <laughs> I'm not sure. Okay, well, that's good. You said you're not sure, all right? If I wanted to buy a whole pound, that would be 1.0. Yeah. Okay. If I bought 0.88, did I buy a whole pound yet? No. No. So is it going to be more or less than $1.99? Oh, it's going to be less. It's though. going to be less. And you're quite confident of that now, right? Yeah. Do you have any idea how to figure out what the exact cost would be? Yeah, you have to multiply. Well, easy. Don't tell me about it. Let's see. You go up there on the board and write it, all right? And if okay. you need some help, Scott is right there. <laughs> okay. okay, so I bought 0 0.88. Okay, that's how many pounds I bought. Yeah. And it cost $1.99 for a pound. So what I want you guys to do is figure out how much the leeks actually cost if I only bought less than a pound. Okay. All right, so what do you think? We have two numbers, and you said what operation we have to use? Multiplication. Multiplication, all right. There's only two of them, so you can probably figure out what to do now. There you go. Ah, uh -huh, here she goes. Okay, nine times eight, 72, good. You got yeah. the two down there and carry the seven. We just gotta kinda talk our way through this to make sure you know what's going on there okay. and what's happening. Um, then you put the seven here. Mm -hmm. So it was 72 plus seven more, 79, right? Yeah. Good, okay. And then you move the seven here. Uh -huh. Zero times nine is zero, plus yeah. seven there is you go. seven. Good. Then you have to put a zero here. Mm -hmm. Then it's eight times nine again, 72. Bring the seven again. This one would be 72 plus 7, mm -hmm. 79, bring the 7 again, yeah, and then again, it'd be 7. Yeah, again, again, huh? Oh. <laughs> then it would go right, wait. Yeah, just move it over one. Yeah, just 7. And the kind of way you can check that too is you have two 9s there, so both of the lines really should be the same. It's yeah. just moved over by one, right? Yeah. Okay, you want a little more room there? Uh, yeah. Give you a little bit more room on the, on the side there. We can kind of move the page down. There you go. Okay. And what's last? Last, we have to do this times one, but it'll be the same thing. Yeah, that's kind of nice. So just, just put Just don't two forget zeros. those space holders. There you go. And then you have to put eight, eight. Mm-hmm. Okay. Last step? Adding. There you go. No, now, hold on there, hold on. what's yeah. in that first <laughs> column there? Oh, it's a 2 plus 0 plus there you go. 0, which is a 2. Good. Hooray for erasers, right? Yeah. <laughs> this is 2. Good. Then 9 plus 2 plus 0 would be 11. Mm -hmm. You bring the 1. That would be 8 plus 1 is 9. 9 plus 9 is 18. 18 plus 7 is 25. Good. So you bring the 2 here, mm. then 7 plus 8 is 15, plus 2 is 17. Good. Now what about the decimal point? How are you going to figure out where that goes? Well, you see, we're supposed to go like two spaces this way, uh -huh. and then another two spaces this way. Yeah. So now I just go, got to go four spaces. So 1, 2, 3, 4. There you go. So if you had to estimate, well actually not estimate, now you have to come up with a real price that's going to show up on the cash register, right? Yeah. How much did he spend on organic leaks? Spend a dollar and seventy-five. Now, does that can does that go along with the hypothesis you had at the beginning? Is it actually less than the price per pound? Yes, it, it is. is. Okay, so at least we know at least the answer makes sense, right? Yeah. Good deal. All right. Well, let's reveal it and see uh -huh. if indeed I did get charged the correct price, and we can see a dollar seventy-five <laughs> hey. at the bottom. Nicely done. <laughs>
All right, now you're not off the hook yet here, sister. We're <laughs> going to take a look at the other two. I'm not going to make you work through them, but first of all, I bought 0.82 pounds of red onions at $1.69 a pound. Is that going to be more or less than $1.69? It's going to be more. Why more? Because it's over one. 0.82. Oh, okay. Then You're it's going to be less than. Look at the first one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so it's 0 0.82. Yeah. That's how many pounds at $1.69, so more or less? Less. Less, all right. <laughs> then I bought yellow onions, and it was 1.36 pounds at 99 cents a pound. So that's going to be more. That's going to be more, all right. And that is today's Math in the News. Making Sun do a little work there on our Math in the News, my cash <laughs> register receipt right there. All right. If you would be so kind as to do me a favor and erase the board, okay. because now I've got one of the problems that you're working on in class, where you're looking at intersecting lines. Then head on over to oh, the, wait. there you go, see the red? Oh, wait, oh, okay, I see, I see. You can make a brand new one if you want, go over oh, to the okay. red one. Okay, okay. There you go. Oh, and now this one. There you go. That's <laughs> You got it. All right. So, Scott or Son, doesn't matter to me, whichever one of you wants to, because we'll put it up on the uh, camera for everybody to see. If you guys want to draw that up on the board. Okay. All right. And we've got uh, points A, B, C, and D. Okay. And a over here. And B. Oops. That's a fun B. Son <laughs> can fix it for you later. <laughs> and over and here. we've got one angle at 130 on. degrees. And 130 on the bottom, okay. Yes, and then up above, we've got in parentheses 3x minus 35, close parentheses, and that'll be a degree also. Okay. Now, what we need to do is we need to find out what x is and then the measure of one of the angles. Yeah. All right, so Sun, explain to Scott how to do this type of problem. Okay, so first we have to know that, first to find what x is, we have to find this entire thing. So to do that, we're going to have to know the, um, the amount of degrees of this line, which is 180. Okay. So, oh wait, whoops. So we have 180 degrees in one flat line, right? Or one straight line. Yeah. Okay. What else do you know about the picture without doing any math? What else can you tell us about the picture that we have here? Um, this 130 degrees. Yeah, 130. So is that going to help you? Which angle do you think that might help you find? Could help us find this one. Let's do it. Oh, wait, this one. I mean. Oh, that one too. Sure, either one, right? Depends yeah. on which line you look at. Yeah. So which line do you want to look at? Do you want to look at the line that's A to D or C to B? Which line would you like to look at? Uh, we'll look at from A to D. Okay, so A to D. So looks to me like you're going to be able to figure out some information about the angle on the left, right? Yeah. A, O, C. Would you agree? Yes. Okay. So usually what we do when we're uh, looking at these lines here is we're going to look at this line, this angle right here. Yes. Okay, that's the one you want to look at. All right, so you said the two angles should add up to 180, right? Yes. So how can you find the angle there if we know that the bottom angle, COD, is 130? Uh, we can do 180 minus 130. There you go. Good for you. And it's 50 degrees. Okay. So that goes... Right there. Into that, into that spot right there, right? Right yes. there. Okay, what else do you want to find? We have to find out what x, what this um, angle degree okay. is. So how do you want to do that? There's a couple different ways to do it, and I'm curious to know about the method you're going to go through to find out what that angle is, or what that letter is, actually. Uh, we can do, since we know that this one's 50 degrees, you can do 3x minus 35 plus 50 degrees, and it has to equal 180. Gotcha. Now, when two angles add up to 180 degrees, do you know the word that describes those two angles? 90 degrees. Oh, right angles. That would be 90, just like you're thinking, right? Mm -hmm. And if you add two angles together and they add up to 90, those are complementary angles. Yes. What about angles that add up to 180? Do you know what they're called? Supplementary. There you go. So you have two angles that are supplementary here, right? Yes. AOC, which we found to be 50, mm -hmm. and 3x minus 35, which we don't know what that is. Yes. But we're adding those two things together because they're supplementary. You're going to add it to 180. I like the way that you're going to go about this. All right, what's next? Okay, so first we have to um, combine like factors. Good so idea. we have to do negative 35 plus 50, which is also just 50 minus 35, which is... 
15. Okay. So then it'll that, so then it would be 3x minus 15 equals 180. There you go. Good for you. You got some room so to do that there. What's next? Now, now is it going to be plus or minus 15? Oh question. yeah, it's it's like this. No, because wait, the, the 50 was positive. <laughs> oh yeah, it's going to be. Wait a minute. Yeah, it's going to be positive. Yep. <laughs> I got confused there. So. So when you go down to the 15, right? Yes. The final answer is is positive 15, and I like what the the work that you did there, right? This is a positive. There yes. we go. And now you're going to make that in the problem to be. Yes. I really want that to be positive. <laughs> make make that to be a positive in the in the problem. So what's next? What's your next step in solving this this uh, little two-step algebraic equation? Now we have to get the x by itself. Good idea. So we have to subtract 15 from both sides. Okay. That'd be 3x, because this cancels out. Mm -hmm. Then this would be... Doing some borrowing there. 165. Okay, yes. good deal. How about a little more room? Yeah. Let's see if I can get over there and... Bring it down. There you go. Last step. Now we have to divide by three, so we can get x by itself, like completely. Completely by itself. There you go. Yes. So the x equals one sixty-five divided by three would be five. Okay. So three goes to sixteen. The one here, and then five again. There you go. Good. So it'd be fifty-five. Fifty-five. So does that mean if you go back up to our angle, right? Mm -hmm. If we go back up just a little bit to our angle there, does that mean? that this angle right here, the top angle, this whole angle right here, does that mean the whole angle is 55 degrees? No, it just gives us the answer so we can solve it and find out the true. Ah, do you think how we should figure out how much it is? Yes. Let's do that real quick, okay. just to make sure. So, so if you know that x is 55. Times 3. Okay, that's what 3x means, good. Yes, that would be 165. Okay, strange, we had that over there, huh? And then. <laughs> Minus 35, and that would equal 130. 130. Do you see 130 degrees anywhere else in that picture? Oh, right look at here. that. So there is a relationship to that, that you can see, at least in this picture, right, between the top angle and the bottom angle. Yeah. Do you know how to describe those angles? Two angles that add to 90, you said are complementary. Yes. Two angles that add to 180, or add up to one line, are supplementary. What about two angles that are opposite of each other when two lines intersect? Do you know what those are called? Uh, I forgot. Yeah, it is kind of a unique word. They're called vertical angles. And in this case, it's kind of nice because they actually are vertical of each other. But the two left and right angles are actually called vertical angles, so even though they're kind of looking horizontal. The point is, vertical angles, which are across from each other, are equal. So a different way you could have solved this, th the way you did it was wonderful, but a different way you could have solved this, you could have said 3x minus 35 equals 130. Yeah, that's what I was and talking about. And that would have worked as well. Yeah, that's what I was talking about in math class. Mm -hmm. But then uh, she said that, our math teacher, she said that um, to show us how to solve it like that, we just did it the long way. Absolutely. So that's what yeah. I was showing. And either one of them will give you the same answer. And it depends on whether your class has talked about vertical angles or not, because maybe that's tomorrow's lesson. Yeah. Sometimes the teachers don't want you to get too far ahead. But hey, as of today, you'll be at least one step ahead. That's good. There you go. Nice work Great on Great problem. problem right there. Yep. Nicely done. All right, well, you're well on your way. I'm uh, confident that you know about your intersecting lines. So now <laughs> I've got a problem that I gave my students. So here we go. You know what a hydrologist does? No, but it's something with water. Ah, there you go. Nice, nice. <laughs> now, you must have had a vocabulary lesson in the past of uh, how to decipher <laughs> words. There you go. All right. A hydrologist needs to know the number of gallons in an acre foot. A conversion chart on flow tells her that 450 gallons per minute equals two acre feet per 24 hours. From this information, compute the number of gallons in an acre foot. So, clear the board because you're going to need some room. <laughs> <laughs> so, between you and Scott, figure out how you're going to do this problem. Okay. Hmm. So, where do you want to start? We got a lot of numbers there. Uh, can we start by naming the numbers? Sure. I can't read from there. Okay. So oh, there let's see. It says 450 gallons per minute. Okay. Let's work so with that number first. 450 gallons per minute. Gal. Okay. And then the next thing says 
uh, that that's going to end up being two acre feet per 24 hours. So before you write that down, before you write that down, you realize that the next couple numbers are talking about hours, right? Yes. Can we maybe first figure out how many gal if it's 450 gallons per minute? Let's mm -hmm. figure out how many gallons per hour, and okay. then we can deal with the other numbers since they're already talking about hours, right? Yeah. Can okay. you do that for us? Yeah. How would you figure out if it's 450 gallons per minute? How many gallons would you pump in an hour? Well, to bring this to an hour, to find out the equivalent for the for an hour, mm -hmm. um, you have to know how much minutes are in an hour. There you go. Which is 60 minutes. Good. So 60. So we got that part. So what are you going to do with 450 and 60? You have to multiply them. Let's do that. Okay. So you can put 60 right underneath your 450 if you want to. Oh, wait. Or you can do it up there too. Either way. Yeah. You can tell it's going to get some pretty big numbers in this problem. Yes. But the easiest way to solve this is by doing 45 times 6 and then adding the two zeros. Oh, I like that. Well done. So this would be 0, 3, 24 plus 3 is 27, and then two other zeros. Gotcha. So you just use the numbers that weren't zero and add a couple zeros on the end. Yes. So let's make sure we're clear about this number. This is 27,000. Yes. Tell me real quick, 27,000 what? 27,000 gallons, gallons per hour. Per hour. Good for you. Not miles per hour, right? That'd be pretty fast if you were driving. This is yeah. gallons per hour. Good for you. All right, so the next part says that we're going to do uh, two, that, that equals two acre feet per 24 hours, right? So let's not worry about the two yet because we're going to do one in a minute, but per 24 hours. So if you have 27,000 gallons per hour, how many gallons would you have if it pumped for 24 hours? You have to multiply this Again, by 24. Again, we're going to get big. All right, here we go. 27,000 times, times 24. 24. And we can do the same thing that we did before. Oh, so. I like it. And you know what? I like your little uh, way of doing this because 99% mm -hmm. of the students that come in here would put 4 times 0, 0. 4 times 0, Absolutely. 0. They keep doing that, which is fine. Yeah. But this little shortcut you've got, I think, will be helpful to a lot of students. Save as well. a little time. I love it. Yeah. So, so if you're just doing 27 times 24, great yes. idea. And so, we're going to add those zeros at the end. We don't want to forget about them, right? Yeah, we're not going to forget <laughs> about them. They don't go Let's away. Just we're just going to postpone them for now. We're going to multiply it like this. So 7 times 4 is 28. Bring the 2 up here. 2 times 4 is 8 plus 2 is 10. Good. Then you add that 0. 7 times 2 is 14. Bring the 1 here. 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 is 5. Good. So now you add these. That would be 648. Six, yes. Okay, so can you put the real answer down there now? So we have to put 648 and then add these three zeros. So one, two, three. What number is that? Six, 648,000. Gotcha. Now, again, the same question 648,000 what? Gallons per hour. Oh, wait, gallons per 24 hours. There you go. Good for you, right? Yes. Or is now the next question is is it gallons per 24 hours? It's a gallons per day. This is gallons per day, right? Yes, because 24 uh -huh. hours is the a The last day. part of the problem says that's how much it would pump in, it would give you two acre feet, right? Yes. So this is how much we would pump in, in a, a day. whole day, which is good information, and it would give us two acre feet. But we don't want two acre feet, right? Yeah. We only want one acre foot. Yes. So. You with me there? So the yes. last step, what do you think in there? Divided by two. Okay. Gosh, finally we don't have to multiply anymore. Not that multiplying is bad, but that was getting some pretty big numbers there. Okay, so... Son, question for you. Can you use your same trick when you're dividing? No, you cannot. Okay. Actually, no, you can. <laughs> <laughs> so, it'd be 648 divided uh -huh. by 2. Okay. So, it'd be 3, 2, 4. 3, because, 2, 4. Yes. Okay. So this but would be... But we can't be, forget about the zeros. Yes, yeah, so this three, would be two, two four, four, zero, zero, zero. Gotcha. Okay. And last time I'll ask, ask it, I promise. Three, two, four, zero, 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 what? Gallons. Gallons. Per. Per. Uh, Take a look at the question again. So question look at what we want to do. Okay. Compute the number of gallons in an acre foot. Oh, so... Gallons per acre foot. There you that's go. It. It's as easy as there it. you go. Yes. Yeah, that's a lot of water, huh? Mm -hmm. 
Nicely yeah. done, yeah. son. Some great problems right there you've worked on. And for your efforts today, you've got yourself a meal courtesy of our friends at The Broken Yoke. So congratulations on that. Hopefully you have an opportunity to go visit our friends over there. Sometimes they've got some great food. I know it's Steve for breakfast. Ooh, that's some good stuff over there. Hey, you know what? We're going to do some more, but it is time now, in a couple of moments, to get our museum moment. But we'll be back right after this. Well, back once again with some sixth grade students around Bakersfield. We are at the KCSO's building and continuing our work on circles. So the students know how to create a circle using the compass with a specific size, radius, or diameter. So the vocabulary has already been gone over. Vocabulary is including uh, radius and diameter, where the points can go. So what the students are doing now is they're, first of all, drawing the circle. So draw horizontal and vertical diameters. Now who can remember what a diameter is? What's the diameter? What is a diameter? It goes through the entire circle, right? So if I draw a horizontal and a vertical diameter, let's say I'm just going to do this. I'm going to draw my 3-inch circle. And now I want a vertical and a horizontal. Well, I know horizontal goes across. Okay, so I'm just going to go like this. There's my horizontal, okay? Now I want a vertical. There's my vertical, okay? The next step, connect the ends of the radii to form a square. Now, that's going to be a bit of a challenge for you, maybe, right? Because right now you've got a circle but they want you to connect the ends to make a square. There you go, you've got it. So just think, all right, when you have more than one radius, they're called radii, so I'm just going to connect the ends and I'm going to make a square. So if there's one line, There's another line, right? So keep going, and then when you have all four of those lines in there, you'll have a square. Go on to the next step, right? Just keep on going all the way through. So it says, mark the midpoints of each side. How do you think we would do that? How do you know where the middle of the line is? What's the first thing you would have to do to the line? Any idea? If I wanted to mark the middle of the line, how am I going to know where the middle is? Okay. Could I measure it? Okay, if I measured it, let's say it's six inches long. What's the midpoint of it? Three inches, right? So you know how to measure it, right? So go ahead, find the midpoint of the line, right? Then what they want you to do is connect the midpoints to make another square, all right? Continue on to the next one and keep going, right? So you have a circle, then you have a square inside the circle. Now that square, you're going to make a smaller square inside of it. Okay. And when the kids are through marking all of these midpoints and endpoints with the radii, the diameters, the circles, the squares, they'll have a beautiful geometric picture that they can color later on and doing a little bit more with circles with some sixth grade students here at KCSOS.
And once again, just a reminder, we have phone tutors available until 5.30, most Tuesdays and Wednesdays throughout the regular school year. Time now for our museum moment. And today we're pleased to have Curtis from the Bakersfield Museum of Art in studio with us today. How are you today, Curtis? I'm doing great, Mike. Thanks so much for having me on. Well, I'm glad you were able to make it. First of all, before we get going with the uh, lesson today, what do you do? Like, what's part of your uh, role with the Museum of Art? Ah, so I am the guest services supervisor as well as the venue coordinator. Um, and typically what that entails is when people do actually get to come into the museum, I greet them, I make sure that they're knowledgeable about the museum, what they're seeing, um, any information that they need, I give them that. I give that to them, um, as well as the venue coordination part. Is oftentimes people like to rent the museum for special events like weddings and things like that, and so I handle that portion as well. All right, great. Well, I'm glad you're here today. You've got Sun over there, and uh, you guys ready? Take it away. All right. Well, Sun, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you're thank ready you to do a little bit of art today. Um, so uh, a part. In, in addition to the uh, duties that I have already told you about, I also have become one of the content creators for the Bakersfield Museum of Art. Um, so things that go up on our website, like educational videos and things like that, I assist with those and creating those. Um, since, of course, the museum is unfortunately closed down right now due to the pandemic, hopefully we'll be back open soon. But in the meantime, we've been doing a museum at home portion to our website. And I'd like to talk to you a little bit about that. So. When you go to our website, uh, you can select a category called Museum at Home. And this has four distinct categories in it. And it's going to offer a lot of different things. Our first category is from the curator, uh, which contains really fascinating insights into different um, artworks that we have, uh, permanent collection pieces, different exhibits that we've had in the past. But uh, Rachel and Melissa from the curatorial department do a really great job of talking about these really interesting things. Um, also, uh, interviews with artists uh, in text as well as video format. Now, the Inspired by Our Permanent Collection uh, is actually downloadable art projects. These are uh, developed by our educational team. And it's really a, kind of a lot of things for all ages. However, at times, some adult help can be required. In our third category, we have Color Our Collection. Now, these are really cool coloring sheets that you can download and print just from your computer. And they're really for all ages. It covers a lot of different um, subject matter from the museum and its permanent collection, but really fun stuff. And finally, we have our Art Projects for All Ages, which is the category that I'm the most um, connected to. That contains uh, currently 33 different uh, video art lessons that you can view on the website as well as um, lessons for children ages five and under, and uh, Spanish-speaking lessons as well. So a lot of good stuff on there. Um, now, before we get into our actual art project, I want to show, talk to you a little bit about an artist named Stephen Douglas. Now, Stephen Douglas is a longtime friend of the museum, and he's uh, based out of Santa Monica. And he is a master portrait artist, um, as you can see on the uh, image there. He does very detailed work of uh, very special people who can uh, get their portraits painted by him. Um, this particular piece is entitled uh, Martha. And as you can see, it is very detailed. I mean, if you look at uh, the veins on her hands, it's uh, very detailed. Um, her wrinkles in her clothing, the light on her face, you can see that this guy really has um, a great talent for what he does. Now, um, one of the reasons why it looks so realistic is not just because of those uh, features that I listed, but also because of proportion. So the figure looks realistic because it has realistic proportions. It's not cartoonish or anything like that. And so what I want to talk to you about today is how to create a realistic, um, realistically proportioned human figure. And thank you so much, Soon, for helping me out with this. Thank you. And um, the first thing to note is that when we are drawing this figure, that we're going to actually be using the head as the kind of guide to create the body. And we can see that in our step one. So the first thing we're going to want to do is grab our pencil and kind of put our pen off to the side. And our first 
uh, kind of oval shape or a head shape. Uh, we're going to make that a pretty good size, about the size of like a large grape or so. And if you can do that with me. And of course, this doesn't have to oh be a my. perfect circle or anything like that. Oh, you all right? Yes. All right. It's the hazards of the job, I guess. <laughs> so now, starting with that, we want to continue by actually mm -hmm, doing seven more of a similarly sized oval just down the line directly underneath. Okay. And we want to keep these as similar in size as possible. But again, they don't have to be perfect. And this is just practice, after all. And what we're really doing is just creating a tool for us to use, more of a guide for us to use as we actually create our figure. Because as we see, as we work through drawing our human figure, we'll see that the body is proportioned using these shapes. Mm -hmm. And just a light sketch. And we're going to be going over these later with uh, some marker in just a few minutes. So don't worry about being too clean with it. Okay. Oh. Okay. All right. Got them? Yes. OK. So you have uh, eight circles in a row? Oh. Oh, we got one more? All yes. Right. And then we'll move on to our second step, in which we're going to add two more circles at the very top, just on both sides of that top oval. And we want those to be about the same size as well. Okay. All right, perfect. So now that we have our guide in place, now we can move on to using our pen and actually uh, sketching out our human figure. Okay. So the first thing we'll want to do is this top middle oval. We're going to use this as our head. So we can go ahead and just color this in in black, or outline it. Don't necessarily color it in. And this will re represent our head. Okay. All right. Now, next portion, of course, what we want is a neck to connect the head. And that neck is going to extend down about halfway, halfway through that other oval, or that next oval. Very good. Then, of course, we want shoulders. And those shoulders are going to extend out to the edge of those outer ovals. Okay. Perfect. Now we can do the arms. Now the arms are going to extend for about three ovals. Now we're starting off in a, uh, the, half, the half point of this oval. Yeah. So we'll need to count down. We'll need to count down half, one and a half, two and a half, and finally three and a half. And those are the lengths of the arms. Very good. Now, everybody is, of course, formed differently. So if your person looks a little bit different than mine, that's completely OK, because that's what it is in real life. So now we can move on to the interior. So we can move on to our torso. Okay. And our torso is actually going to start out right at the edge of that line and about in the middle of those two top ovals. And we can just draw those for two oh. ovals long. Oh. Very good, yeah. And then the interior of the arm, if you have room for it, um, will just kind of extend out from there and just a long parallel to the outer shape of the arm. Okay. All right, perfect. So then we're going to move on to our next step in creating some legs. So of course, 
we have this point right here, at the edge of our um, torso. That's, of course, our waist. And so we are going to extend down three and a half more ovals and create some legs. And we can have those just kind of spread out just a little bit. Leave room for some feet. Okay. All right. OK, so moving forward, about the halfway mark, about right there, we'll want to continue with the interior of the leg. Okay. And just kind of go ahead and do the inside. And then to complete him, we can do the feet by just drawing a couple of diagonal lines extending out to the edge of those top circles and connecting to the bottom just with a nice curved line. Make sense? Yes. All right. So you can see that everything is proportioned off of the head. And if we look at the um, uh, <laughs> diagram, we can see that everything on the numbers on the right side add up to eight ovals. And then coming back to uh, Martha, we can see that using the shape of her head, it adds up to eight ovals as well. So if you do the math, of course, it is um, structurally or proportionally correct. Um, just to mention our upcoming exhibition of Color and Figure, Paintings by Linda Christensen, is coming up soon, uh, January 28th. And um, while we may not be open during that time, the digital presentation will be February 11th. So keep, a, keep an eye on our website for that um, uh, offering. And thank you so much. Well, good. I'm glad you've got the website down at the bottom right there. So yeah, people absolutely. can go there and check out some more things. Also, thank you very much about the date February 11th coming up because that is something that you guys can mark on your calendar and check out that presentation. Beautiful lesson right there. And I do remember we did a problem one time where we wanted to find the actual size of a person. And I think we said, I said, the head is one eighth of the actual size. Mm -hmm. And that goes to show exactly where you had those eight ovals and the head was one eighth of it. And if you know the size of that, you can figure out the size of the entire person. All yeah, right. Absolutely. So nicely done. Curtis, thank you very much for coming in this afternoon. Thank and you so uh, much. son, learned a little bit about the uh, human body and how to draw and things like that and how proportion works. And that is today's Museum Moment. We'll be back with more right after this. While many household members are settling in for the day, cats can be found running racetracks around the living room or attacking a favorite toy. Remy the domesticated tabby is not demonstrating either of these things. It's commonly thought that cats are nocturnal, which means they do their best hunting and are most active at night. This is sort of true. Cats are considered crepuscular, which means they are most active at dawn and dusk. Have you ever walked into a dark room or been outside only to see the magnificent glow of two feline eyeballs? It made me wonder, how well can cats see in the dark? I mean, compared to humans anyway. Quick eyeball tutorial. The retina is in the very back of your eye. It has millions of cells that are sensitive to light. And there are two types of cells, rods and cones. Rod cells help seeing in light and dark changes, shape and movement. Cones help for seeing color and only work in bright light. That's why you can't see color very well in the dark. Here's the thing, cats' eyes have six to eight times more rod cells than humans do, but not as many cones. These extra rod cells allow cats to sense motion in the dark, much better than humans can. They have an elliptical or egg-shaped eye and larger corneas. Cats also have a structure behind their retina called the tapetum, which is what makes cats' eyes glow in the dark, and it improves their night vision by helping to pick up the small amount of light available at night. So basically, cats can see using one-sixth the amount of light that people need. So yeah, they can see better in the dark, and those glowy little eyes help.
And yes, indeed, we do love all of our friends over at Camp Keep and all of the knowledge that students receive over there. As a matter of fact, since Sun was in sixth grade last year, because your school actually was able to go to Camp Keep before everything happened in the springtime. So we were talking a little bit earlier because on one of the previous programs, they were showing us some of the things in one of the trailers at Camp Keep. And you remember that was and kind of your experience with it? Yeah, um, we had lots. We had lots of fun times in the trailers because, like, at night we would just before we went to sleep we would tell these weird stories and it made everyone <laughs> laugh. <laughs> and then, uh, was there anything that kind of grossed you out while uh, you were there? Yes, like when we were in one of the tanks, like I saw all the dead stuff, and that was just <laughs> no. They're right. So they're in jars, right? Yeah, and they're I mean, in they're jars. not alive, but some of them kind of look. Some of them are like just not pleasant to look at. Okay. <laughs> but it's nature, right? Yeah. And you learned a lot while you were there. And so here's did you have fun and learn a lot while you were there? Yes. So definitely. And indeed it is a lot of do you remember any of the songs? Uh no. <laughs> <laughs> you don't remember the scat song? Oh, I know the scat song, yeah, but I don't everybody know. Everybody knows the scat song. I don't remember the um lyrics. <laughs> That's okay. We'll do that another time because you have some more math work to do right now, which is exactly why you're here. So, we have another one of those problems that you were working on before with the line. So, together you and Scott go ahead and work on this one. Okay. So, first we have so first this um we have 170 degrees. That's one of our known angles. Mm -hmm. So we'll just write this down here. Okay. And now, since this this is the same thing as this, so uh, it's basically like quick the quiz. other. Do you remember the terms? Yeah. How are they um, related? Vertical angles. Vertical angles. angles. Good yes. for you. So in the last problem, instead of like just solving for this by knowing that it's equal to 170, solved it out. So mm -hmm. now we're gonna solve it like this. Okay going to figure out how much it equals. So it'll be 11, oh wait, just write it down here. So it can be 11 plus 3x equals 170. Okay, that's a good idea. Now to find this, we have to get x by itself. So first we have to subtract 11 from both sides. Okay. So minus 11. This cancels out. This is 3x equals um, 170 minus 11, which is 6, 10, 159. Oh, wait. No, that's perfect. That's great. Oh, okay. <laughs> so now we have to find out what x is by itself. So we have to divide 3 from both sides. So it'd be x equals. 159 divided by 3, which is 5, 15, that leaves nothing. Then this would be 3, because 3 times 3 is 9. Good job. So x equals 53. And when you go back and look at the problem, right, it yeah. depends on what the, an what the question asks. If the question asks what the value of x is, you certainly have found that. If the question yes. asks how big the angle is, that would be a very different question, right? Because you have to yeah. plug it back in. And of course, you might not have to do any work if it said what's, how big is the angle, because you know it's the same as the other ones. Yes. Just for fun, let's see how big the other angles are. Okay. What about those real small ones? How big do you think they are? Uh, I'm not sure, but because they're acute angles, they're less than 90. Yeah, they are definitely less than 90. They're real small. Okay. What's the way that you can figure out? Do you want to look at the line JL, or do you want to look at the line MK? Uh, let's look at JL. Okay, so if you're looking that, straight, that line straight across, how many yeah. degrees in that straight line? 180. 180. So you already have 170 for the angle M-O-L, right? We're going to say the middle is O. Yes. So now we want to look at J-O-M, that little tiny angle right there, right on the side. Yes. Right? And we want to see how big that angle is. Yeah. Yeah, that one right there. That's it. So so this, yeah, so, so we want to figure out how big this one is, and it's 180 going all the way across, right? Yes. Okay. So just a little quick subtraction. What would you have left if you already have 170? It would be 10 That's degrees. it. And what about the other angle that's across from it? It's the same. It's like the same angle because they're vertical angle mm -hmm. angles. So this. Would, oh wait. <laughs> <laughs> this would be 10 degrees as well. That's it. They're vertical as well. So now you know all the values. Yes. And whenever I have my students doing problems like this, I always ask them to do that. No matter what the question asks you, if you look at a problem like this, don't even worry about what the question says, but figure out what all the angles are and all the variables, and then you can go back and figure out what the question asks. 
because then you have a lot of information you can pull from it. You don't have to go, oh, I forgot to do that part. So go back and work on it. Work out the whole thing, then you can pull the information that you need. Nice work on that one. That was great. Yes. There you go. Erase the board because you're going to need it again. Oh, here we go. So this is going to be totally unlike anything you've ever done before. <laughs> but it's going to be a beautiful problem. You're going to remember it for a long time. Okay. So let's take a look at it together. All right. You can write down anything you need to. A bridge will collapse in 17 minutes. Wow. Okay. Four people want to cross it before it collapses. It's a dark night. There's only one torch between them. So obviously <laughs> we're talking back in the 1100s or something like that. Right? Not, not modern day where you have a flashlight. Only two people can cross at a time. A takes one minute. Wow. B takes two minutes. C takes five minutes and D takes 10 minutes. How can you get them all across before the 17 minutes are up? And remember only two can cross at a time. So how would you like to, you guys go ahead and think about this and you've got plenty of time. Okay. Wow, <laughs> well, what are we crossing? So we're crossing the bridge that's okay. going to collapse in 17 minutes. Gotcha. So we're going to go there's... two at a time, right? Yes. Okay. So at first, I believe that to get them all across, because there's four people in total, mm -hmm. we're, we're going to have to take A and B, because like, get we can if we can um, get one more. No way. I'm not thinking about this right. <laughs> yeah, think about the most efficient way everybody's got to get across. Right? So one thing you might want to do is if you want to draw a line on the bottom, like the bridge, and have everybody A, B, C, and D over on your left. And as somebody, as two people go across, you're going to leave one person there because the other person has to come back with the torch. With the torch. There you yeah. go. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. So you're going to, so I'll let that, I won't okay, give you so any we'll more hints right now. So we'll kind of think about that a little bit. Now here's the, here's maybe the first question we want to answer. Do you want to get the fastest person over there or do you want to get the slowest person over there first? You want to get the fastest person. No, wait, the slowest the person. The slowest person over there. Okay, yes. so who's going to go with them? Uh, a. And why? I think that's a great choice. Why would A go with them? Because they're the slowest. No, wait. <laughs> we don't know if they are. Um... So let's say that D, the slowest one, we get okay. D over there, and you're telling me A is going to go with them. Yeah. Great choice, right? Okay. Yeah. okay. Why did you pick A, though, to go with Oh, them? because it's only one person. Yeah, not only one person, but it's one minute for them to go oh, across, right? Oh, yeah, one right? minute. And don't forget, they got to go back with the torch. Yeah. So if you pick D to, t to go across and leave A, and then D had to walk back and take another 10 minutes. You'd be out of time before even the other two people got a chance, right? Yeah. So I think A is a wise choice. We want to make sure that um, A is the person that carries a torch the whole time because they're the fastest. Yes. Okay. So first step, let's get D all the way across. Okay. okay. So go ahead and maybe draw an arrow down there. D goes over. And how long is that going to take? 10 minutes. So okay. So seven. let's make a little list here and figure out how much it's going to take. There you go. So, so, we've, so far, we've taken... 10 minutes yes. on the first trip. Yes. D is now over there, mm -hmm. and now A has to come back. Would you agree? Okay. Yes. How long is that going to take? A minute. A minute, good. So, so far, so good. Now we have one person over there, and you can cross off D from the left-hand side, or there, that's fine too. Who's going to go next? C. Cause... Okay, let's take C over there. Okay. So if you take C over there, okay, how long is that going to take? Five minutes. Uh-huh. And then A has to go back. So and then, then he has to go back. So one. So the, now tell me where we are right now. We are at B. B is the last. Well, hold one. on. How much time have you used? That's what so I'm far? saying. How much time have we used so far? Oh, we've used sixteen, six, seven. No wait, eleven. Oh, it's seventeen. We've used up all our time. Yeah. And you've got A and B still mm -hmm. over there. So A and B are still stuck on the other side. So you st I like the way we started. Keep working. But maybe we want to see if we can go a little bit different theory about what's going on there, right? Mm -hmm. Interesting thought. Okay. So you're going to stick with the 10 first? Oh, wait. It says two people at a time. Two at a time. Yeah. Yes. So what if like A and D, they went together, mm -hmm. came back, 
and then a there's something about B. <laughs> <laughs> there's something about B. Hmm. Yeah. Um, C takes five minutes. <clears throat> we can try another way. Let's go ahead and you want to keep the 10 and the 1? Because yes. that was the thing that was a good start. So let's erase the 5 and the 1 and see if we can, instead of moving C over, maybe we can do something else. Okay. okay? So we've already taken D. Mm -hmm. He's done. Yes. Right? And A came back. That's taken 11 minutes. We only have 6 minutes left. Yes. It's a rough one. Six minutes left. Okay. Here's what I suggest. Don't right. take D first. Oh, D's too slow. We don't want to take D first? Okay. Now, right. what you had said earlier was A and B are going to be fast. Start with that. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. It's a, a whole new D. theory. Okay. So, first, A and B, they yeah. go together. A and B go together. How long is that going to take? That would take three minutes. And oh, then hold on. How long does it take? Oh, wait, two minutes. Just two, right? Because yeah. A can catch up with anybody. Yeah. They can go at whatever pace they want to go. Yeah. So two minutes, and now B is over there. And yes. you've got two minutes, actually, to finish it now. B's done. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> so cross off B with a big X now. Yes. There you go. And we still have C and D, but you can, yeah. if you cross off B with a big X, then we'll know that the C and D are still there. All right. Okay. So who's going to take next? Uh, we're going to take C next. Okay, so A has to come back. So, yeah. So, so one minute. more. Let's take C next. How long is that going to take? Now, well, okay, I would suggest take C and D. Oh, Bring okay. C and D both over. Okay. Because it's going to take 10 minutes, but you get that five minute out of there. Oh, oh okay. I see. Ah. There ah. we go. So C and D are going to go over. Yeah. So then that would be five plus 10, 15 minutes. Okay. Well, it's going to take 10 minutes for them Only to go 10. over. Oh, oh, yeah. Because C, C can go slower, but it's not faster, right? Yeah. Okay, so you're going to okay. leave D there, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now, C has to come back? B is going to go back. Oh, there it is. So oh, even though I B was see. already there, B is the one coming back. So C B? and D are, are good. Okay. Oh, there we go. So B comes back with the, to and get how long a. is that going to take? That would take two minutes. Two minutes. So, so put, put the two, two minutes there. over there. Yeah. Remember, we left A. Yes. And so when they come back again? It would be just another two minutes. Another two. Ooh, I like because it. Because A and B are now going back again, right. and it's going to take two minutes. The key yes. was to get those super slow folks working right. together, together at the same time. Yeah. So you can eliminate the five. Yes. I like that. What do we have? What's the total here? Three, 12, three. So this is three. Uh -huh. This is 12. That's yeah. 15. 15. Plus two is 17. 17. It worked. Yeah. Hey, there you go. Nicely done. <laughs> All right, Sanan, come on over here real quick. Now, you've done a lot of different types of math problems today. Mm -hmm. Yes. So did you learn a little something? Yes. And you're working with those intersecting lines. Did you learn a little something about that today also? Yes. That you didn't know before. And did you have fun with the art lesson? Definitely. Yeah, that's always <laughs> fun to do a little something different, right? You can tie yeah. art and math together with that proportion and that head one-eighth the size. All right. Did you have fun? Yes. Good. I'm glad we were able to bring you in, and uh, especially because you were supposed to be here last year. Yes. But when everything happened towards uh, spring, there were some students that weren't able to come, so we are certainly glad that Sananda was able to come and visit with us this year. Hey, we do have phone tutors available until 530, and until we meet again, continue to do the math. Major support for Do The Math has been provided by Chevron, the Kern County Superintendent of Schools, Edison International, Valley Strong Credit Union, California Resources Corporation, Bakersfield West Rotary Stroop Family Foundation, Panama Buena Vista Union School District, Bakersfield City School District, Kern High School District, and AC Electric Company, with additional production assistance provided by these supporters of education in Kern County and throughout the state of California.